welcome to this video. Playing a 15 minute game, playing G Star 2014, Magnus Carlsen fan, <laughs> maybe. Okay, let's see. Let's see. What could I play? Oh, maybe go for King's Indian. The same ish. Yeah, the thing is, the best line against the Zemish probably is with c5, but I really don't know the modern Benoni so well. And um, um, yeah, here c5 is um, nowadays the main move, leading to very interesting play. I go I go to something else I go for something else. The problem with C5 is that I don't really know the lines when white takes the pawn. I mean I've played the Zemish a number of times um myself of course. But um I as white but I never took the pawn and uh, I never liked it because black gets the initiative but it's it's uh, at the same time complicated and I don't uh, know know it too well okay so he's playing for this kind of <laughs> direct attack with h4 yeah this is sometimes really dangerous let's see mm -hmm. quite often a good antidote is to to get for a direct counterplay on the queen side. I'm, I think I'm going to do that. C5 is um, what I wanted to do anyway. And then get a possible B5 in, in Benko style. The question is, hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking maybe you can take and then h5. It's maybe an idea. Hmm. Yeah, various various ideas. I mean, the normal move is just d5, of course. But maybe he can do it, can play differently. Even h5 is not completely, uh, yeah, it is a bit crazy. But still, okay, he went for the normal move at the end. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's go. I need to get counterplay. At least after h4, it's clear that white will not castle short anymore. This is uh, an important important thing here. The Benko gains an enormous strength if white cannot easily castle kingside and secure his king. And after h4, this is not possible anymore. If he takes on b5, the question is, should I just recapture? Or play knight e5. Quite often knight e5 is a bit a bit more precise as it um, asks white an important question. How are you going to develop? It's not so easy to develop really. Okay, yeah, he's doing something else entirely. He really wants to get this quick attack in. But uh, it's not it's not yet so dangerous. Let's see. Yeah, the question is: Should I take or not? I have knight e5 as well. If he takes, uh, he will play h5, of course. Uh, not so clear okay 
and uh, it's also a position where you can easily spend ages. Oh, I was more expecting h5. I was expecting h5. He can he can go h5 now, uh, of course. Mm, but what is this knight h5, g4, knight f6 back. Mm, check on h6, and then g5. Okay, he's he's got some some things going on the h farm. It shouldn't really um, lead to a direct mate or something, but it is uh, it is something. Yeah, what he definitely I think shouldn't do is take on b five. This just he just uh, allows me too much play on the queen side. He he needs to be straightforward. I think h5 is the way to go. If he doesn't do that and play a slow move, I might even play h5 myself and just block this. This wasn't a bad move anyway, even uh, instead of b5. Yeah, maybe I should have played h5. It's not a... Oh, this looks very passive. Okay, let's not think about it too long. It's not clear now how he's going to where where he's where where will he put his king? It's also the capture the leave. The, it's it's on c4. This is a weakness. But uh, first. Let's see, should I go h5? Hmm, I don't know. The, the, the problem is here h5 already isn't so dangerous anymore with this weakening on the queen side. Yeah, let's do this first. This has a very simple idea, queen b4, or take queen b4, attacking the c4 pawn. And um, this can easily get lost. The pieces are simply not positioned in a way to defend the pawn. What I'm talking about is something like knight e2, yeah, knight g e2. If I just take c4, takes takes queen b4, c4 is hard to defend. He needs to play queen d3, and then um, there's knight d7, intending knight e5, and this already is tricky. Maybe f4 then. Hmm. It's not it's not very comfortable. There's knight b6 also. Rook b1, queen c4. Yeah, this is a very simple way to play, but probably a good one. One problem with this b3 uh, idea is now, let, let's say he would switch back to the direct kingside attack. h5, knight takes g4, knight f6, queen h6, check, king g8. After that, there's immediately this piece hanging on c3. Okay, so... Now, should I take now on c4? Hmm. Uh, yeah. He really does not have anything great to prevent it anyway. And I still wonder about a possible g h5. Maybe. Takes, takes, queen b4, and then h5. Come on, let's invest this one move with h5 to stop his play. It's not clear what he's going to do next anyway. One problem of this h4 advance is that it's not really working well together with f4. And this means a knight on e5 is a very, very strong piece. It cannot easily be kicked away with f4. 
Aha. Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting move. It might get the knight to e3, where it is really better placed, covering c4. Hmm, not bad, yeah. Not a bad move. Hmm. Hmm, what should I do? I mean, I can take c4 here, because the queen is then protected on a5. Takes, b takes, and then a queen move, like queen a3. But then knight e3, hmm. Okay, we've got rook b8, quickly. Hmm, I'm unsure. I don't really want to exchange this knight on e5. So probably a, a queen move. Hmm, but where? To b2. Okay. This um Yeah, he really wants to get the queens off. I thought I thought this is not good really because of taking in queen d3, but maybe I'm I'm just getting the queen into a very <laughs> very precarious situation. Maybe. Not clear. What about if I take it, play the end game? Okay, come on. Uh, I don't know. It is not a bad end game, but it feels bad. It fe doesn't feel right to exchange queens in this position. Maybe back here. Yeah, this is better, Check. of course, just here. And if he goes queen d2 now, which he probably must, otherwise, I take c4. I have a5. Yeah, yeah, this is better. This is better. If he goes queen d2, knight c4, queen b4 takes, b takes c4. Hmm. Yeah, it's also not bad at all. Okay, and here I thought a5, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This this feels right. Taking, I take with the a-pawn, it have uh, this pressure on the a file. Not good. So, and um, I, can, I can improve my position further with the coming bishop a6, rook b8, this kind of, this kind of, uh, this kind of approach. Okay, he can he can improve. I mean, with moves like knight e three here. Maybe I can. Maybe taking and bishop a six is also an option. Yeah, many many attractive attractive uh, ways to play. Yeah, this I was thinking about this one. I'm not sure about it. He he could try if I take yeah, the knight takes on 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 d1. He could try to play a4 and then just plonk something on b5. 
and trying to blockade the position completely. I'm not sure about that. I'd like to avoid it. A3, on the other hand, is also weakening the B3 pawn. So it's not necessarily all positive. So bishop a6 maybe. I know I'm exchanging a somewhat bad bishop here, but progress. I need to make progress here. Hmm. Just for a moment. Queen takes a normal looking move as it uh, has knight d3 ideas and control c4, but still. Yeah, okay, this is probably right. I was thinking about rook takes because of the c4 possibility. For that, the queen on b6 is really nicely placed. Yeah, and now my plan, <clears throat> my, my, my coming idea is um, the pressure on the b3 pawn. Rook b8, rook b4. Yeah. The good thing is if he goes knight c4 now, I can just take it. Okay. So is he going for knight d3, maybe? Hmm, yeah, interesting. I probably need to move the king away to get both knights mobile. Yeah, but now I can take, yeah? I can take now. The thing is, after the, all the trades, rook b4, c4 is, is, not, is not defendable anymore. Defensible, it's the right word, right? Not defendable. Okay, still, if he takes with the queen, queen takes rook b4. Hmm. I know, yeah, there's no move, really. And uh, pawn takes rook b4 is also not especially attractive. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was a very problematic position. I thought maybe knight bd3 to exchange a bit more. I think he really spent uh, too much time with moves on the queen side instead of just. Um, just um, attacking. Yeah, the problem with all this is it's not just a pawn, it's also the activity. He really has no active active plan. Knight b3, I'm going to play rook a8. Okay. Still rook b8. Yes. So that after rook b1, I can exchange and take a4. netting a second pawn. He can he can of course now enter on the seventh but oh now I can take here I'm 
we're just briefly hesitating because of rook a2 check. Ah, but I, can, I don't need to do that. No need to do that yet. I can always play that move. White resigns. Yeah, it's three pawns. <clears throat> I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure about some things here. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, here he has many many options. Of course, h4 is um, a very direct one. C5. Starting here, he can consider many things. The question even is if he should play d5. And I, I don't think d5 is bad, but I, I, he could try, uh, let's say, long castle or g4. All these moves are are not completely pointless. Even h5 is not... Uh, yeah, but the, man, okay, this is it's maybe a bit too much. If you look at this and you need to really play something like g4 to get something going, I can go here. Yeah, okay, this is too much. Yeah, okay. Here it's already interesting to play h5 to just stop his his, um, his plan. But okay, this is probably not bad. Bishop here. Knight e5. Well, this is fairly logical. And here, this this is this is I think where White needs to to look for for some improvements. Okay. Let's start. Let, let's check h5 briefly. If this is um, dangerous. I thought I can just take. The other option is to, um, to play the comp line, grabbing this pawn. Yeah, maybe it's possible that there is no threat because I mean, I have two defensive pieces and he lacks some firepower here. I have quick counterplay. Maybe. Yeah, h4 is, is, is a bit crude, but it's it's still not it's not completely crazy. But here after that after that I think it gets it gets tricky. It gets really tricky. <laughs> A funny computer suggestion is here knight h5. <laughs> to uh, go on those weakened dark squares. It's not bad, probably. But uh, OK, I think opening up the queen side cannot be a, a mistake. I have clear counterplay now with takes and queen before or queen before immediately. We went here and then I played h5. Here, maybe I can play more forcefully, but I wanted to stop this h5 business. And I think it's not a bad choice. This. Queen a3, yeah, and here he really insisted on trading. But, um, maybe just here. I mean, h4 and h5 is something that benefits um, black, but it's not. It's not uh, the end of the world. This is a playable position for white. This this was played. And here I also had this option go into the end game, but. It felt a bit meek to me. Check. Yeah, well, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, and this is it, it's getting it's getting problematic. The queen side is um, is getting problematic. Bishop a6 is an important move. There there are maybe players who would shy away from this because. This is the bad bishop technically, but you need to get get progress going. How how do I get ahead here? And here this is just a concrete problem. He took on a6. Do we see that in the game? And if he doesn't, let's say he plays this, I go rook b8 and increase the pressure here. Let's say just for, for argument's sake. And now let's say take, take, and here intending rook b4 and c4 yeah, you, you just get the, the pressure on b3 and this is more important than a long-term consideration like a bad bishop yeah i think this is this is already really problematic and after that it, it it's losing the pawn and the, and the game 
I'm not sure. Maybe he really should have played um, something like h5 early to justify in some way the h4 move. If you, um, if you, let's just. The normal move, by the way, here is knight h3. This is something I can, I could recommend here. This is a good reply against knight d7 normally because the knight has a useful place on f2. Um, black is going for c6 and b5 then. This is the setup that I was aiming for. It's not a particularly great setup, but it leads to interesting play. Um, this knight h3 is almost always a good option if black plays knight d7. It solves the typical problem of the Zamish variation that Eduard Gufeld, one of the King's Indian legend, legendary players uh, once um, very nicely <laughs> um, expressed by his phrase, yeah, the Zemish is a nice line, but ask the knight on g1 what it thinks about it. Yeah, and here the knight thinks it should go to h3 and f2 and have a good, good spot there. Okay, thanks for watching.